Kingmakers of a Kingdom have declared that Edidem Igbo Abasio II the fifth remains the Obon of Calabar and Grand Patriarch of Efuk people as they distance themselves from the purported proclamation Antonia Ni as Obon of Calabar elect. The Kingmakers operating on the platform of the Tubum Traditional Council issued a press statement condemning the activities of those that have been busy attempting to subvert the will of Efuk people who only recently re-elected and installed Edide Motu as Obong of Calabar, pursuant to a recent judgment of the Supreme Court. The press statement signed and issued by the chairman Etubom's traditional council, His Royal Highness Etubom Basi O.B. Duke, described those behind the alleged proclamation of Ani as impersonators. Earlier, the former governor of Cross River State, Donald Duke, had written a formal uh, written to the former governor, Ben Ayade, to urgently intervene in the festering crisis that had rocked the revered stool of the Obong of Calabar to avoid a bloodbath. Well, joining us to discuss this uh, is architect um, Chief Abasie Yondem uh, IV. He's um, the Etubom of Abasintiero Royal House and a member of Etubom's traditional council, Palace of the Obong of Calabar. It's good to have you join us, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Great. For the average person who does not necessarily understand what's happening um, in Cross River State with the Obong of Calabar, uh, which is also a, a very revered stool in terms of the hierarchy of traditional rulers in this country, uh, paint us a picture of why there's this controversy. All right. Well, um, like you said, the stool or the throne of the Obong of Calabar dates back at least 600 years of recorded history. Um, what happened was in 2008, the then Obong of Calabar, Edith and Tai Elijah Henshaw, um, fell traditionally ill, which in other words means he went to join his ancestors. And of course the saying is, the king is dead, long live the king, meaning that there has to be continuity. And um, the Efuk people came together and decided to, uh, to select another Obong. Now, there are about 24 royal families, and um, it's a rotational arrangement that they have amongst them. There's what you can call zone. It's divided into two. You have those who are in the Western Calabar axis and those who are in the Central Calabar axis. Edid and Tyler Jahensha was from Central. And so it was clear that the next Obong had to come from the Western. And so there are age long procedures that were followed. The Western people were asked to select an Obong and present to the Central. Now, there were four people that indicated interest. Um, I did a now who was a Tubum, Ipo Konabasio too, was one representing one principality. Um, a Chief Antonia Ni is another who represented yet another. Hello? Who yes. represented yet another principality. Mm -hmm. And you had a Tubum in who represented the third principality. There was one other, but anyway, there was a screening process. At the end of the screening process, uh, I did a make book on about you too, was that judged the most qualified, while the others, for one reason or the other, were disqualified. This report was now forwarded to the conclave, um, which is a special body that sits with the Tubum's traditional council and is responsible for selecting and taking a final decision on who becomes Obong. Because there had been threats that some people would go to court, you know, over one or two reasons, at what had taken place at the lower level, the conclave decided to put everyone that had um, indicated interest on the ballot. At the end of the meeting that took place, the two emerged 11 votes um, from the team we can while um, Anthony and me and a senator each had one vote each. So a number of other procedures uh, then took place and 
it is a book on Abasio II, was now proclaimed the Obon of Calabar. Um, having gone through all the rituals, all it goes along with that ancient tradition. And um, he was proclaimed and recognized by the government and everyone, and he started you know, carrying out his kingly duties. Now, um, Chief Antonio Ali decided to go to court. Um, and I think his main grouse was that he felt that the disqualification of the favorable support that he had received at the lower level may have biased the minds of the king makers who vote, only one voted for him, you know. Um, so after four years, the judge at the high court um, decided that indeed uh, he had been treated unfairly and uh, a number of officials who had to disqualify him including the, he had not been an Itubum before the process started, the fact that the Itubum ship was transferred, and a number of other impediments, traditional, uh, that were in his, in his um, past, had disqualified him. Well, the judge decided in his wisdom that these were not material, and um, said the whole process should be repeated with him as an automatic candidate as well as any other. Well, the kingmakers, as you can imagine, were distraught over this, but they are law abiding. They went back, went through the entire process from Western Calabar. Um, there were only two people on the ballot because everyone else declined, apart from Edith and Rachel Konabasu too, and Tony Ani, who was an automatic candidate as appointed by the court. This time it was 15-0. Um, yeah. Edith and Republican Abbasi II scored 15 votes, while Tony and he had zero. Um, and he was proclaimed as Obong of Calabar. This is now for the second time. The first one through the traditional process, the second one as a court ordered process. Uh, uh, can can now, I ask a question you, quickly before before you go yes, forward? Go ahead. Many would many because of how traditional stools work. Many would think that this particular process naturally falls on a different. I mean, just as you said, different houses and different conclaves or principalities. Um, yeah. But but this sounds more like a, an election of sorts or a selection process. Has this process somewhat become politicized? Because if he's saying that there had been some bias, then it means that this is not necessarily um, a, a, a monarchy as it works in other climes. Okay, well, the Efuk throne is not a hereditary monarchy. I so, you know, it's not, it doesn't pass from like the Japanese or even like the the, the English. UK, mm. yes, or the English do. So as more of, you know, let's call it a Republican or a constitutional monarchy, where there are these royal houses and it rotates between them. And um, yeah, that's the way it is. So if, if I may just go on. Yes. Now, immediately after that judgment, which had been complied with, and all parties notified, and Edith was now back on the throne. The Etubon's council felt that some of the uh, orders in the judgment would be a problem in future, because they appeared to have upturned old and ancient traditions. So they took the matter to the Court of Appeal, even though they had complied, and said, look, these particular portions here we find obnoxious, and we would like you to look at it and uh, adjudicate again on the matter. After a year and a half, the appeal court came back with its own judgment, which said that Tony Ani was not qualified and ought not to have participated in the process at all, according to the ancient traditions and the constitution, which the effort people had prepared for themselves, that there were very express provisions in that constitution that prohibited him. Um, and therefore, 
the fact that he had participated had contaminated the process. Mm. And they should go back and redo it, but in black and white, exclude him because he was not qualified to have participated. So once again, if the people gathered, went through the process, and again, Edith Mepo Okunabasi too was the sole candidate. And everyone else declined, all those who may have been qualified declined. Mm -hmm. He was the sole candidate, and he was re-proclaimed as Obamans of Calabar for the third time on the basis of um, the court judge, or according to the order of the, of the court. Mm -hmm. Now, the Yeso people have a tradition that once an Obam has sat on a kata and has been crowned with the Tinya, then until he goes to join his ancestors, no other person can be Obam. And we've mm -hmm. had, you know, cases in the past, 1926, when an extant Obam fell out of favor with the government, uh, the colonial government at the time. And the colonial government in its usual way tried to remind them um, Chief, I think we've lost you there for a second. You, I, let's go back. You said uh, there was a time where an Obon fell out of favor with the colonial government, and um, was it that they tried to remove him? And what happened? We'd like yeah, to hear that part. They tried, tried to remove him, and if people resisted it completely, and he remained on the throne until he passed, after about 15 years, mm. yes. Interesting. So he was record. yes. And what happened, you know, it's interesting because basically he ran foul of them because the women in the market came and complained to him that he had been given unfair taxes. And he asked them not to pay. The colonial government approached him and asked him why he had given that order. And he tried to explain that it was very unfair. And they were obstinate. They said he had, they had to pay. So the Obong now volunteered to pay on behalf of the market women and actually paid. So for having you know, stood in, uh, to challenge the government at the time and having shown that he was a power center, he was rich and so on, um, the colonial government felt it was necessary to undermine such a power center. They couldn't have that kind of competition. Okay. So that history is there. Okay, let me quickly anyway. bring you back because we don't have too much time. Let, yes. Let's go okay, into go the, the politics of it because governor, former Governor Donald Duke has asked former Governor Yadi before his tenure got to an end to intervene mm. in the matter. Now, we saw yes. pictures and videos of a sacred place. Um, when I say sacred, a sacred place to the ethnic people to the Ekbe um, tradition being um, overtaken by police officers. And, and again, one would wonder why that would happen. Um, is this something that has been put to bed with the fact that the Obong has been made to go through this process three times through the order of the court? Or do we see um, more trouble coming from Chief Tony Ani in the future? Well, you know, two things. First of all, there is no sacred place that was desecrated. The place we have for the coronation is the Efe Asabo. And that was, nobody went there, nobody can go there. Okay, so this took place in a, I think it's a Duke Town Families Council. Council. And there's a lodge there. But, you know, I, I really think that thing was a fact, more of a skip, because the process of making someone have an urban is such a revered and sacred uh, ceremony that takes a number of days, and each royal family has a particular role that it plays during that process. You know, it's not just done, you know, where someone sits on a plastic chair and somebody picks up a hat and places it on his head and declares it. You know, there's, anyone can sit in his bedroom and uh, proclaim himself president of America or president of Nigeria. Mm. You know, there's freedom of speech. 
but come out and try and do something that in case that you actually have that power, then you may you may have to chat with the security agencies because mm. you're trying to incite the public. Okay. We saw during the inauguration of uh, the, the governor, the, the governor, um, governor, Prince, Prince too. Senator Prince, yes, back in the two, uh, that the album was there with his entire council, the two rooms council, and he was recognized, and uh, the ceremony went very, very well. Okay. So the album is there. Thank you. All right. Well, unfortunately, we do not have time. But then, of course, you have told us uh, succinctly that um, there's nothing to worry about. And the Obong, obviously, is still the Obong of Calabar. Uh, and, of course, the courts have had their say. I want to say thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, architect Bathe Yondem is a chief, um, and he is an Itubom in I'm council. In council. Yes. Thank you so much and for joining us. He's not a chief any longer. Okay. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Pleasure was mine. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. We want to thank you all for participating. Don't forget, you can play catch up on all our previous episodes on Plus Politics. Just go to Plus TV Africa and, of course, like, subscribe and follow all our programs. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening. <laughs>